situated 15 kilometers south of the urban district of Baldi in Tianjin, amidst wheat fields and forests, stands a cluster of European-style structures. Hidden beneath the verdant canopy, this villa complex, known as the largest villa area in Asia, is called the Jingjin City. However, since its opening more than a decade ago, its occupancy rate has remained extremely low. The place has earned its nickname as the largest ghost villa in Asia. So, what could be the reason for such a massive empty city located between Beijing and Tianjin, two mega cities? In 2001, Tianjin's Baodi District planned the ambitious Jingjin City, covering over 4,100 acres. Designed for a population of 500,000, it includes residences, entertainment, and facilities for day-to-day -day living. The new city boasted plans for 8,000 villas, a grand five-star European hotel, Asia's largest hot spring city, a substantial commercial center, and even a sprawling temple. Positioned centrally between Beijing, Tianjin, and Tangshan, Jingjin City is 110 kilometers northwest of Beijing's city center, 50 kilometers south of Tianjin, and 80 kilometers east of Tangshan. Initially developed by Guangzhou-based Hopson Development Holdings Limited in 2004, the company has invested over 20 billion yuan in the project to date. The grand entrance to the villa complex, reminiscent of the Arc de Triomphe. Can accommodate 10 cars side by side. However, after constructing 3,000 villas, the project halted. The hotel, hot springs, and temple were subsequently completed. Sadly, due to the lack of foot traffic, these massive investments have not yielded any returns, and the area is now primarily used as a popular backdrop for influencers and wedding photography. It was rumored that a major selling point for Jingjin City was a station on the Beijing-Tianjin intercity railway. Which was then under construction. However, due to changes in Tianjin's development plan, when the railway launched in 2008, the station shifted from Baodi to Wuqing. Not only did the anticipated transportation benefits not materialize, but promised amenities like commercial zones also never came to fruition. Essentials like markets, schools, and hospitals are several kilometers away in a nearby town, making life inconvenient. Consequently, many homeowners who purchased properties there quickly moved away. Some netizens who visited found the area eerily quiet and deserted, especially after dark. Property prices in this new city have plummeted from millions to hundreds of thousands due to the affordable prices, which are almost a quarter of those in Beijing. Numerous buyers were still attracted. To them, purchasing a villa for such a price was akin to fulfilling the American middle class dream. A few years ago, during a hot real estate market. It was rumored that 90% of the villas here were sold, but the occupancy rate was less than 10%. Subsequently, other real estate developers tried their luck in Jingjin City, but failed to boost its popularity. Although the anticipated Beijing-Tianjin intercity railway station didn't materialize, a station on the Beijing-Tangshan railway, which opened last year, has rekindled some hope for homeowners. However, revitalizing a city that has been abandoned for over a decade is no easy feat. In recent years, driven by continuously high property prices, China has seen a proliferation of new cities. In a 2016 report, 12 provincial capitals and 144 prefecture-level cities in China planned an average of 4.6 new cities for each provincial capital, and about 1.5 new cities for each prefecture-level city. Shenyang in Liaoning Province alone planned 19 new cities. As of July of 2016, there were over 3,500 new urban areas at the county level or above. What's even more astonishing is that the planned population for these new cities requires a staggering 3.4 billion people, enough to accommodate almost half of the global population. So, what's driving this great leap forward in new city construction? Primarily, it ties back to local governments' habitual reliance on land finance. Planning for 200,000 or 400,000 or even a million people in a new city makes a substantial difference in terms of land quotas and potential land transfer income, leading to many local governments competing in a race to build more new cities. Some even relocated administrative centers to new cities in hopes of drawing population influx. Secondly, the overabundance of new cities is related to China's lack of coordinated urban planning. Central planning departments tend to have strict land use quotas for existing cities, 
but in terms of macro governance, such as the number and regional distribution of new cities, they often take a hands off approach. Despite the undersaturation of many old cities and severe land wastage, they still receive approval for new cities, reflecting a policy imbalance. In the wake of China's 2016 decision to relax its one child policy, experts had predicted a significant population surge. Moreover, with major cities imposing population influx restrictions, several smaller towns were eager to expand their capacities, setting ambitious goals to double their populations by 2020 and 2030. Years later, many sprawling new cities emerged. However, China did not experience the anticipated population growth. Instead, in 2022, the country witnessed a historic population decline. Due to the stronger attraction of larger cities, These smaller towns failed to draw residents, leading to significant population outflows. As a result, not only did the new cities remain vacant, but older towns also started to decline due to dwindling populations. To make matters worse, China's real estate boom came to a halt in 2020. Now, with soaring unemployment rates, younger generations struggle to make ends meet. They are increasingly inclined to lay flat or take a passive attitude towards life. Showing resistance to societal pressures. Regardless of how property developers try to entice them, they are hesitant to get married or purchase homes. Currently, countless new cities, either uninhabited after completion or stalled midway through construction, stand as eerie ghost cities. One internet user shared footage of the current state of a tier 3 city in China. Look at this building, only three households are living here. It seems like the building has been around for quite a while. It's part of an older neighborhood. Look at all those empty units. This is the downtown area of my hometown, a tier 3 city. There's just too many houses built, but not enough people to fill them. Smaller cities are developing real estate too quickly, but the population growth isn't keeping up. Netizens call this place the number one ghost city in Liaoning. Thousands of sea view apartments, but only one household lives here. Rumor has it that no one would take these homes even if they were given away for free. There are several neighborhoods in this whole area, with the largest one being Longwan Junjing. It's surprising that even with only one household, there's still property management and security here. This is in Jinzhou, Liaoning. All these are sea view properties, including villas and residential buildings. To put it bluntly, this might be the seaside city with the lowest occupancy rate for sea view homes in the entire country. These buildings have been here for over a decade. Most of the properties were likely sold, but many people just haven't moved in. Word has it that many of the original buyers were older folks. Even though they've retired, life here wasn't convenient, so they just moved back to where they came from. This is the largest ghost town in Panjing, Liaoning, and also its most significant unfinished residential area. This site has 100 residential buildings, translating to tens of thousands of housing units. Presenting itself as a new city. Originally designated as resettlement housing for relocated villagers, it was left incomplete for over a decade due to the developer's financial difficulties. None of the housing units are habitable. The footage reveals overgrown weeds and general disarray. In fact, many similar resettlement projects have remained unfinished. Local governments, keen to increase revenue from land sales, expanded city sizes and constantly built new cities. This often involved forcibly relocating rural residents to purchase urban properties. However, widespread corruption and unethical practices by some developers resulted in numerous unfinished buildings. Thus, villagers not only lost their original homes, but also couldn't relocate to these promised residences. Leaving them displaced. A significant portion of China's new cities emerged alongside the development of its high speed rail network. In recent years, many provinces pursued the goal of connecting every city with high speed rail. Some even aspired to connect every county. Consequently, the construction of high speed rail stations surged. Establishing new cities around high speed rail became a common strategy, with slogans becoming popular, such as taking form in one year, taking shape in three years, and becoming a city in five years. Even smaller cities continuously announced plans for these new cities. Some planned areas spanned tens of square kilometers. For instance, the new railway city in Dezhou, Shandong, covers 56 square kilometers. In 2011, when the Beijing Shanghai High Speed Rail was officially opened and passed through Dezhou, 
the city announced its plans to create a new urban center around the rail benefits. However, this new city, although completed, failed to attract the expected population and development, resulting in a vast, desolate place. Local governments were enthusiastic about constructing high speed rail new cities primarily for two reasons. First, to harness the constant flow of passengers from high speed rail, concentrating populations and stimulating the economy. Second, to leverage high speed rail new cities to boost land values and attract property enterprises to bid for land. Some regions even covered the cost of constructing high speed rail stations through the development of new cities around them. Unfortunately, while this model worked well a few years ago, the overall environment has shifted. Relying on high speed rail stations to promote urban expansion is no longer viable, leading most high speed rail new cities to fail. Recently, some cities have begun to cancel their new railway city projects. A recent online rumor suggested that Xinhua City in Jiangsu Province intends to cancel the development plan for the Eastern New District New Railway City. This multi billion yuan project, faced with a challenging economic climate, is expected to be shelved. The high speed rail new district of Dawu County in Xiaogan, Hubei, has a planned area of 25 square kilometers, a projected population of 300,000, and an initial investment of over 10 billion yuan. By the end of 2022, Dawu County's permanent population was just under 480,000, with a GDP of just over 20 billion yuan. Spending over 10 billion yuan to construct a high-speed rail district for 300,000 people seems beyond common sense, yet it typifies the decisions often made by local government officials in China. Today, vast residential areas have been constructed there, with large plots of land still awaiting development. The conspicuous absence of residents in these buildings has led many to label the area a ghost town. A significant problem is that the Dawu County High Speed Rail District was built around the Xiaogan North Station, which is over 100 kilometers away from the main urban area. This has resulted in a new city devoid of human traffic, industry, and facilities, making its development virtually impossible. China has numerous such high-speed rail new cities, often located far from urban centers, most of which end up being ghost cities. Not only has the government's massive initial investment in these high-speed rail cities gone to waste, but many who bought homes in these areas have also been left at a loss. For instance, in a small fifth-tier city in Shandong, property prices in the new railway city started at over 10,000 yuan per square meter. But after years, the prices didn't increase, they plummeted currently selling for just 40% of their initial cost. Another example is the new railway city in Jiashan South. In 2018, properties were being sold for 17,000 yuan per square meter, requiring full payments up front and bundled with two parking spots. This effectively pushed the comprehensive unit price over 19,000 yuan. But within less than a year, the property prices began to drop shattering many people's dreams. Built solely on the concept of high-speed rail connectivity, these cities cannot bring significant human traffic to smaller cities. Instead, they seem to accelerate the outflow of their populations. Once populations begin to drain continuously, the game of creating new districts and playing with land finances becomes unsustainable leaving many high-speed rail cities destined to remain as ghost towns. City planning should take into consideration future population scales, water resource management, road planning, and other relevant factors. However, a paradoxical situation in China sees cities with shrinking populations still planning for expansion. When population drain meets urban expansion, ghost cities inevitably emerge. The reality is that population migration to larger cities is an inevitable trend of social development, and the administrators of smaller cities must recognize this. It may be more worthwhile to think about how to introduce and support industries that sustain urban development, and how to provide efficient public services that make people want to stay. Yet, many financially strapped smaller cities, blinded by ambition, borrowed heavily to construct new cities resulting not only in a significant waste of land resources, but also little economic benefit. This debt burden, in turn, drags down the entire city's development. Data indicates that after the opening of high-speed rail, the GDP growth rate for most small and medium-sized cities noticeably slowed. For instance, cities like Qianjiang in Hubei, 
Zhao Zhuang in Shandong and Fu Ling in Chongqing saw GDP growth rates outperforming the broader market before the introduction of high-speed rail. However, after the rail was built, their growth rates fell below average, coupled with varying degrees of decline in fiscal revenue. The expectation was that post-high-speed rail, the population, economy, and finances along the rail lines would be more evenly distributed. However, in reality, the introduction of high-speed rail accelerated the drain of wealth and population from the smaller cities. In fact, the emergence of countless ghost cities in China is not only a product of haphazard expansion by local governments, but is also closely tied to China's real estate bubble growth. As housing prices continually surged, an explosion in construction followed. However, housing purchasing power remained constant. With a surplus of housing entering the market, supply began to outweigh demand, resulting in many uninhabited or even unsold properties. Up until the late 2010s, China's real estate industry was in a phase of rapid growth. However, in 2020, the Chinese government's restrictive policies towards developers' access to credit signaled an end to the real estate boom. Many developers, burdened by massive debts, left numerous projects unfinished. Professor Sun Li Ping from the Department of Sociology at Tsinghua University in Beijing once remarked that the vast wealth created in China over the decades, mixed with significant debts, has been converted into properties and infrastructure. Now, it might be time to repay these debts. And to do so, enterprises are hesitant to invest, and individuals refrain from spending. When a society's businesses lack investment and its people lack consumption, economic recession follows.